How goes it everyone? Corey James here and today we're going to the moon. More specifically to the origins of our moon because here's the thing. Our moon is perfect. Like perfect perfect. In fact, our moon is so perfect and unique we have yet to find its equal and without it Yet accepted theory states it's all a coincidence, the result of random chance events. But is it? Because there are other theories that claim the exact opposite and speculate that our moon could not be the result of random chance, but rather intelligent design. So who's right? Well, that's what we intend to find out. So let's get to it. So first things first, what is the accepted theory for our moon's formation? Well, give me 20 seconds and I'll tell you. The impact theory, aka collision theory, states that shortly after its formation around 4.5 billion years ago, early Earth was struck by a Mars-sized planetary body affectionately named Theia. Now, according to the theory, this was not a direct hit, but rather, Theia hit at an angle and with such force that it caused the two bodies to basically meld into one as the material ejected into space, over time, coalesced to form our moon. So what's the issue? Well, according to the smart people, it's all about the numbers and frankly, they're just too perfect. Let me explain. Our moon is big, like really big. So big in fact, it sits in the number five spot among the five largest moons in our solar system. However, Earth also sits in the number five spot among the largest planets. So our moon comes in first, being by far and away the largest moon relative to its planet, which is a critical feature of our moon because the moon's exact size, which happens to be exactly a quarter that of Earth, combined with the distance from Earth around 239,000 miles, causes something known as a tidal locking or synchronous rotation, meaning the amount of time the moon takes to complete a full rotation on its axis is equal to the amount of time it takes to make a full rotation around Earth. It is also why Earth can only see one side of the moon. And it is also why the moon is perfect. Because its perfect size and distance combined create the perfect gravitational pull on Earth so that it rotates at the perfect speed, 1,000 miles per hour, and remains tilted on the perfect axis, 23 degrees, to create the perfect number of seasons, 4, which created the perfect climate and atmosphere for life to exist and evolve under the perfect number of lunar phases, 8, which stabilized the waters of our planet creating a steady tide which was perfect for the formation of stable land masses, which in turn is perfect for us. This is what makes our moon so special and unique. It is the stabilizer of Earth and the only reason Earth is a viable planet for life to exist because here's the thing, everything about our moon, its size, shape, mass, rotation, distance from Earth, everything is absolutely perfect. And if we were to alter just a single aspect, well, All of that being said, scientists point to just a single event, a single trick of the light that our moon gives us as the best evidence that our moon had to be created, the solar eclipse. Our moon is exactly 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun is exactly 400 times further away from Earth, which in turn gives the earthly observer the illusion of both bodies being the exact same size in the sky. A feature that by itself, to many, is undeniable evidence that our moon was not the result of coincidence. Rather, it was constructed and placed in its current location by an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization that according to the theory, monitor the planet from within. Thin. Now, I get it. This is a hard theory to wrap your head around, but here's the thing. This wasn't a conspiracy theorist or an ancient alien proponent that suggested this theory. Rather, it was two theoretical physicists who, after years of research and measuring the maximum depth of the thousands of craters dotting the moon's surface, realized that the thickness of the moon itself was only two and a half miles deep, leading to the theory that beneath the outer layer was an alien spaceship. Although a fantastic theory, it was somewhat accepted by many within the academic community. However, they tweaked it a bit, speculating that the moon wasn't an alien spaceship, but instead, the interior was hollow. 
That's it, there's LPD. Roger, copy, P-64. Thousand update. Hey, there it is. There it is. Son of a gun, right down the middle of the road. November 20th, 1969. During the ascent of the Apollo 12 lunar module, astronauts released the lunar launch vehicle, crashing it back on the moon's surface, at which point something unexpected happened. According to NASA scientists, upon impact, the moon became seismically active, reverberating like a bell for over an hour. By the way, uh, Aquarius, we see the results now from uh, 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's uh, rocking it a little bit, over. Now, again, I get it. Both the alien spacecraft theory and the hollow moon theory are incredibly fantastic next level shit. But here's the thing, when you factor in just how perfect and essential our moon is, combined with the attributes it possesses, so is the impact theory. So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, which are you more likely to believe? That our perfect moon and its perfect location, that of which is responsible for our perfect planet, is the result of a fantastic collision followed by a series of astronomical coincidences? Or did someone or something put it there? How's it going everybody? Corey James here. Just wanted to say thank you for checking out the video. I very much hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, do the little guy a favor. Hit the buttons, the like, the subscribe. If you're feeling a little frisky, hit that notification bell. Leave me some comments, suggestions on future videos. Do it all. Once again, thank you and I'll see you on the next one.